Monologue 83, The Ministry of Civilian Affairs, Kingdom 18. The agencies of this ministry are to be seven in number as follows. 1. Immigration and Naturalization. 2. Motor Vehicles. 3. Licensing, Permitting, and Registration. 4. Export and Import. 5. Property Trust. 6. Complaints and Suggestions. 7. Financial Counseling. In a very general sense, the Ministry of Civilian Affairs will be the bureaucratic entity that most citizens will deal with on a regular basis. The Agency of Immigration and Naturalization is the entity that processes those entering or leaving the Kingdom, including those being forcibly removed, or who are leaving in protest. Anyone applying for citizenship must be investigated, providing appropriate documents from the country they are coming from to prove who they are, and such information will be used to run background checks on those individuals in their home countries. This agency will also handle temporary work visas, visas in general, passports, and will process businesses that are applying for legal operation within the nation. Even if an applicant for citizenship is permitted to enter the country, they will only have temporary citizenship for three years and are assigned probationary identification. During this time, they must attend the appropriate educational classes, citizenship training through the Ministry of Education, and must prove that they are law-abiding, productive, self-supportive, and loyal citizens. Only at the end of the probationary period will the temporary citizen be interviewed and reviewed, and if deemed eligible, will then be sworn in. Those who are deemed incompatible or who are unhappy with life in the kingdom are immediately removed from the country. The AIN, in cooperation with the Ministry of Defense, will have its own military units that patrol the national borders and deal with illegal immigrants strictly. The AIN with the Ministry of Defense will oversee the development of border security, including walls, fences, very deep and wide trench works and fortifications, as well as border crossing facilities and processing centers for tourists and those caught trying to enter illegally. No citizen who wishes to leave the kingdom is ever to be prevented from doing so, save perhaps a peaceful and non-threatening interview and the filling out of some paperwork. Exit visas and denouncements of citizenship are to be made readily available unless espionage is suspected. And yet those who decide to permanently leave or denounce their citizenship will find it much harder to return should they wish to do so at some later point in time. When a citizen surrenders their citizenship or spends most of their time out of the country for other than business reasons, that citizen will lose all property rights and all their assets may be auctioned off. This only applies to property and assets left in the country at the time of their departure. Non-criminal or peaceful defectors who simply choose to leave because they do not agree with the nation's policies may sell their possessions before applying for exit, and what they take with them will be what they take. What is left behind will become the government's property to dispose of as it sees fit. If a citizen is being exiled or forcefully deported on moral grounds or for some serious issue of incompatibility, such as criminal activity, they may forfeit all property rights, retirement benefits, bank accounts, and property that are within the country, which is then sold by the government. Do not make it difficult for those who are unhappy to leave, but rather assist them in their departure. The only exception, of course, would be for those who have been privy to sensitive materials or have otherwise worked in areas of national security. Such individuals may be seeking to take state secrets or industrial secrets out of the country for reasons of profit or perceived revenge, disgruntled citizens. These individuals are not to be permitted to leave immediately, but are to be detained, held under house arrest, and must wait for three years, a cooling off period or until that which they had access to is obsolete or no longer sensitive in nature. Yet they are not to be tortured, beaten, or otherwise mistreated, save that they are limited in their movements, communications, and interactions. Most nations have a similar process and policy, so think it not strange that I have instructed you to do likewise for the greater good of the nation. 
The Motor Vehicles Agency will be, of course, responsible for issuing driver's licenses as well as citizen IDs in general, testing drivers, inspecting vehicles, and registering vehicles. Yet it is also to be responsible for inspecting and certifying auto repair shops and all vehicles manufactured within the nation or imported into the country to ensure that such vehicles meet with the standards set by the government and the MVA itself. The Agency of Licensing, Permitting and Registration will act as a catch-all service where deeds, property sales, wills, and many other forms of documentation may be stored and where many types of required permits, licenses, and bureaucratic registrations are to be filed or received and there reviewed and archived. The agents of the ALPR are the clerks of the nation's paperwork. The Export and Import Agency will oversee the harbors and all points of entry into the nation, monitoring all goods and materials coming in and going out, and all commercial traffic passing through the country. Its agents inspect cargo and seek to quell all illegal smuggling. The Property Trust Agency shall be in charge of all government lands all seized, confiscated, and otherwise government-owned property, and will also keep records on housing in general. In effect, the agents of the PTA are to be the property managers of the government, and also the housing authority of the nation, including overseeing and managing any government housing projects for the poor. The auctioning of seized properties is to be conducted by this agency. Entry into and continued residency in any government assisted project must be dependent on maintaining a clean criminal record, passing yearly drug tests, respecting other residents, and maintaining the residents in an orderly and hygienic state. The Agency of Complaints and Suggestions will be specifically charged with taking in, processing, and passing along all complaints and suggestions from the citizens of the country to the appropriate agencies as per the nature of the complaints or suggestions. This agency will give each and every citizen a safe outlet for their problems and will also give the government a heads up as to the concerns of the population. This agency will also be where citizens can file complaints about other citizens, government officials, military personnel, the police, or just about anything else they wish. Moreover, petitions by citizen groups, workers, neighborhoods, etc. will be filed with this agency. The agents of the ACS should not be complacent, but are to act as advocates, counselors, and sincere representatives of those who offer complaints or suggestions. Sometimes, perhaps often, there will be little that can be done, as no doubt many complaints or suggestions may be quite strange or petty, even outright ludicrous. And yet, it is not for an ACS agent to judge, but merely to pass along the complaints or suggestions to the appropriate departments of the government, whether local, provincial, or national, with reports attached thereto as to the agent's own observations and whatever relevant facts may seem applicable. Most often, specific offices in the community centers might deal with such complaints. However, this agency must be a safe place for citizens to vent their concerns, no matter how abstract or deranged those concerns may seem at the time. If the issues of the citizens are ignored or consistently dismissed, then minor problems will often become much larger issues. Often, the mediatory function of this agency will diffuse problems before they turn into serious issues. Agents should have the discretionary authority to go out into the field and conduct a preliminary investigation or inquiry into various complaints, as they deem necessary, to deduce as to whether there is actual validity to said complaints. I would also suggest to agents doing their own inquiry that the demons, shadow race, have a little mind game they like to play on people by which the object of the complaint will not occur or appear during an investigation, but only after the agent leaves. That is to say, the barking dog does not bark while the agent is present, but does start barking after the agent departs, or the loud music and ruckus activity ceases while the agent is present, only to start up again once the agent is gone. So, I would suggest discretion and randomness in your arrival and departure, as in appearing to leave only to actually remain for a bit longer afterwards, or show up later for a second random visit. 
The use of small hidden cameras can also be of great benefit when trying to catch a peeping tom or a lewd neighbor or even illegal dumping, etc. However, do not act as the literary big brother and do not abuse your privileges, lest the truth seekers be loosed upon the would-be ACS agent. Always be aware that there are two sides to every story. The tenants of an apartment complex, in example, may complain about their landlord, making up outlandish stories and exaggerated tales, simply because the landlord is trying to do his or her job. The complaints of such tenants might actually be motivated by vindictiveness over the landlord's demands that they obey the rules and or pay their rent. Do not be turned into a hammer against the righteous. The Financial Counseling Agency will be where citizens can go to seek financial guidance and where they will be directed to various governmental, private, and nonprofit programs that assist with needs, loans, grants, and other opportunities. In truth, this agency is to be about connecting the people to the services available to them and guiding them through the often complicated bureaucratic processes required to access such services. This agency will also act as a small government and public run credit union and will be affiliated with the National Public Bank and should be able to facilitate small loans to small vendors and small grants to new cottage industries within the local communities, seed money and minor venture capital, at low or no interest. The agency might also function as trustworthy and fair payday loan companies. In this way, the FCA might actually make a profit without taking advantage of low-income people, using profits to improve services. And lastly, the FCA might also act as an investment and financial counseling company, even a broker, profiting only a small percentage when the client prospers, 1-5% to of the gross profits of any given investor, and by the FCA can help fund itself.